This lecture was pretty interesting. I just want to mention one thing. He talks about an abrupt transition from the west coast of the United States going through Washington. And he talks about zircon crystals. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, but they're found in this area along this line, and they match crystals in Australia, apparently. And that's like one of the only matches. And so he's saying it's evidence of Pangaea or Australia possibly having been right up next to this part of the U.S., in the past, a long, long time ago. And I think that is very possible. Um, stuff like this, I think, is important just as pieces of the puzzle to keep in mind, even though you're not quite sure where they fit in yet. It is possible, I would say, that material was taken from Australia artificially by high tech, whatever, and used over here. It's still on the table as far as I'm concerned, but the continental uh, suture thing is still a good explanation, I think. This video is a time lapse of various areas of Earth, three decades, so 30 years of development and change in Google Maps, and I'll just let some of it play just so you can see how areas develop, and this is between 1980s and roughly now, and uh, you can see how rapidly things change, especially in recent years. So it just needs to be taken into account, and it does explain some of the stuff we're seeing. Some pretty rapid build outs. Coastal changes. Here we see a build out of this area protected by this stuff. It's interesting. Deforestation is what that looks like. Pretty cool. In this one, it's not clear whether this old grid pattern is emerging or if it was built, you know, constructed recently. So it's tough to tell whether it just kind of pops out from underneath the sand, or whether it was built recently. Here we see the rivers doing that changing course, so that's pretty cool. Watch a little slower. So you see it bending and warping. So that does account for most, if not all, of these streak things that we see. And this shows how dynamic the spits are. That's what these things are called spits and sandbars. How they can change pretty rapidly. It's pretty cool to watch.
Dairyland, California. So this is roughly central California. You see all these patterns in 1984. Pretty much already there, I think, for the most part. But you see some new stuff popping up. Tough to say. Hmm. Pretty cool. Venice, you don't see much change to all this coastal stuff, probably because it's mostly protected by these barriers, hence the name barrier. <laughs> Let's see, 84, not a whole lot of change, I think. Dubai, you see these man-made islands popping up. This is Lake Pupo or I guess it has multiple names, but it's these, what I was saying, look like claws right here. Just happens to be in this video. I'm still saying it's pretty darn uncanny. I haven't really broken it down in super detail yet, but it's very interesting. Too bad the resolution on this isn't super great. This one we see some patchy land popping up, so we know that's modern, where you see that, assuming the older photos are reliable. Let's look at that one more time. So yeah, patchy, just general, I don't know, landscaping or logging or whatever. Just, that's what that looks like. Changing water level here. Cool beans. This video is pretty cool. It's a time lapse of one particular beach in Connecticut. So it's from 1934 to present. And what I want to highlight is you see these lines, like what I'm calling the old grid, or I don't know, just parallel lines, networks of some type of artificial work, whether it was just by the farmers at the time, or whatever. This just shows that in 1934, the pattern that we see was already present. So 1934, 1951, see the same patterns there. And then, I also want you to keep an eye on this, just see how it changes the spit or barrier. 1965, see all the patterns, haven't changed much. See it clearer there. 1970, 1986. See these deep grooves that seem to not really go away. It's pretty interesting that they don't. Maybe they're maintained by local municipal efforts, landscaping, whatever. 1990, and you see this thing starting to change. 1995, just kind of what happens. And 2004, it's basically eroded away. So then you'll, since that's gone, you'll probably see some of this stuff start eroding away. Pretty cool. Wider rivers curve. Okay, this is a good video. I recommend it if you just want a quick two minute explanation of how and why rivers form these loops and meander like this. So this is a cool animation. You can see it in a little time lapse of the, the loops warping and meandering. And they do a really good explanation. I won't give you all of it here, but it's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. So I think I spoke a little prematurely on this one. Or at least I should have known this before speaking about it. So the loops grow and then they join and then basically cuts off and then it all starts over again. 
it's like a perpetual creation and digestion of these river loops. It's pretty cool. This I just want to point out or mention that lots of different types of jetties and coastal management tactics and materials are employed to manage erosion and coastal environments and marshes and stuff. So you see these seashell things, bags of seashells, There's they use logs, they use uh, like different shaped concrete blocks, rock walls, little barriers. I think these are tree stumps or some type of concrete thing. Square concrete things. And it's just something to be kept in mind while browsing Google Earth. So just modern work. It's not anything crazy, obviously. This video is... I won't dive into it, but it's just a really good explanation of coastal sand dunes and beach ridges and how they form and the mechanics behind it. And it's pretty concise and it's well put together. So I would recommend watching this if you want to understand the beach ridges phenomenon or streaks as I was calling them. This video, once again, don't want to talk too much about it, but I recommend it and I would just say People know a lot more about this than me, like coastal stuff. So I got a little gung-ho on the whole coastal aspect of it. A little giddy and trigger happy. So, I mean, this scientist understands a lot more than I do about most coastal phenomena. And he's been doing this for years, obviously. He runs all these simulations and stuff. So, I mean, when the observed phenomenon matches the simulation, you kind of have to assume that the simulation is a pretty good guess as to how that feature formed. Anyways, let's move on. Beach processes video. What did I want to say here? Just a good educational video, Longshore Drift. Uh, he talks about these circuits of transport and draining of sand material along the beach, especially California in this case, and it accounts for some of the what look like clean clean sweeps or whatever whatever I was saying and the sand kind of transports along a certain distance and then drains out like a, a big ditch in the ocean floor and then it kind of all happens again in a cycle you can actually see the sand pouring out from that ditch so it's worth a watch if you want to understand some of the Coastal stuff. This, I guess, I guess this whole video is only for the diehards, the tooling of Earth, or whatever. I don't know. This video. What did I want to say? This video just shows some effects of high and low tide. Pretty cool. Uh, this will all be in a playlist of educational stuff. All the educational materials. I'll just put in a playlist in the description and you can check it out. This is just a quick time lapse of, I think I showed this already, but just showing the build out of piers and artificial barriers. Pretty cool. Over a few years. Good stuff. Okay, this one's really interesting. I've spoken about a lot of kind of boring stuff so far, but this one's kind of revealing, I think, pretty cool, an important example or tidbit of information. Let me listen to it real quick so I can review what he says right here. He's in New Zealand somewhere. This area here was once cleared, possibly for some sort of road that didn't end up happening, is what he just said. And then he goes on to talk about the vegetation taking back over again. So. That, I, I wasn't able to find this exact spot in Google Maps, although I tried, but um, it's somewhere in New Zealand, this national park, but um, it's just possible circumstantial evidence that areas have been cleared and possibly recently, because uh, the vegetation, I would assume, would creep back over some of these areas pretty quickly. I don't know how recently, but um, 
He's saying it looks like it was cleared for a road. And he's pretty. He's a pretty solid geographer. He's got a great channel. I watched probably 90% of his videos. I highly recommend his channel. It's pretty cool. Um, I just think that's interesting that he said this area was once cleared. And that's something you see ubiquitously across the planet. Just cleared areas that don't really have a reason to be cleared. If that makes sense. Or inexplicably cleared. Okay, enough about that. This video, Brian Forster talking about these columns in walls in Lebanon. And he's mentioning that it's likely that they were found and reused. So these were part of some older structure or something like that. And then repurposed for use in walls like this. But I don't know if I agree with that. I think this part of the building process and these uh, what look like segments of columns, I think it's at least somewhat likely that they were built like that at the same time with the purpose of making it look like it was from two different eras as kind of a, a scramble or one scramble protocol among many scrambling protocols. If that makes sense. So I just think it doesn't make sense to not just use... I kind of doubt that they were so short on on these blocks that they really needed to include these columns, old columns, because there's the extra work to cut the column to, to size or to length, and then the extra work to cut these edge blocks around this column into a round pattern to fit the column. So I, I, I just question whether it was worth the effort to go to the trouble of utilizing old columns in a newer construction. I just think it's one more empty breadcrumb or pseudo feature or let's see, one more deliberate mismatching and shuffling of construction eras and methods. So just keep that in mind. I'm not super confident about that speculation, but it's in the back of my mind at least. This fellow again, Argteles, talking about um, multiple layers of historical... I don't... he explains it better than I can, but uh, multiple different layers, like... and he's using Photoshop as an analogy. So like you can select and deselect layers and, and sh drag them and order them and put them on top of one another to form kind of a layer cake of different aesthetics and eras and I don't know, maybe timelines and stuff like that, like super out there stuff. And I would say it's worth considering, worth keeping on the table. Um, go watch this if you want to hear him explain it. He explains it better. Alright. This video by Conspiracy RS. He mentions this blog, Where is the Groove? And it's talking about these blocks that are not actually blocks. So, these blocks that extend up where there's material extending up above the block. And what I'm speculating is that these, quote, mistakes, unquote, or, I don't know, revealing bits of information are the perpetrator's way of outing themselves so that they can say, see, we told you, because it was so obvious, we, we left you such obvious clues that you're stupid for not seeing it, and you deserve what you get. Something like that. Um, this, this whole video is really good. I recommend it. So just keep an eye out for blocks that look like blocks but aren't. Here he's pointing out in the Great Pyramid, the eroded blocks are actually protruding out above the level of the, the clean blocks, which are not eroded. So that's the reverse of what it should be. Um, 
it should be materials eroding away, not outward, if that makes sense. I just recommend watching the segment and reading the blog, and in some cases, wondering whether the the mortar, or whatchamacallit, uh, render the material between blocks, wondering whether that's continuous with the blocks themselves rather than some type of render. There's a lot of like dead giveaways. Like, look at this. See, this is one of those things. It's like a, a dead giveaway, like an obvious dead giveaway that if we overlook, it's our fault, or it could be argued that that's the case. So we have what looks like a rubble pile, but then in this rubble pile, we have a piece of rubble which conforms perfectly with another piece of rubble, which is cut to look like it's rubble, but isn't. Um, let me try and clarify that, or simplify it. So you have what should be a pile of separating blocks that is kind of in disrepair and falling apart, but then at the same time in that pile of blocks there's these two blocks in particular which join perfectly. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, it's rubble with imperfect joining and then this perfect joint right here. Two rocks conforming together. So I think this type of thing is to out the creator as a fraud. So whoever created the Great Pyramid was basically just like... <laughs> And all these other sites too was basically just like dicking around or at least was covering their ass for some reason, some clause or some, I don't know, some technicality where they have to, they can't deceive too much. They can't do too good of a job deceiving. So they have to leave these obvious, obvious clues that the conventional explanations of these sites is not true. And here you almost see like a, an angled joint. Well, that I could. That's not as suspicious as this, but I think that's pretty crazy. And and this blog also talks about areas of rock. It's like continuous morphing between the bedrock and and the bricks or alleged bricks. I think this one is in Petra, but it's like you can't tell where the brick layers end and the bedrock layers start. So go watch this video. Uh, it's linked in the description. Here's that blog he was mentioning in that video. And with these, I don't know whether these are like support bars or something, uh, but made of roughly the same material as the stone. So I'm even considering that these sites with disrepair or damage are brought into being or built with the initial conditions of already having damage, or what looks like damage. So as in, this is how it looked when it was first built, possibly. It's possible. Not super confident on that, but it's, it's possible. And then lots of areas where you see a break in the material of the, the outer rock, and then you see this smooth, smooth underlying layer, which I'm doubting is repair by modern archaeologists. I'm definitely doubting that in a lot of cases. It's like granite, but the granite's like chipping away to reveal this smooth underlying layer. And yes, you could make the argument that this is like shellac or some type of filler that was filled into, into the broken granite, and that might be the case in where it's... It definitely is the case in some instances, but I think there are some instances where that is not the case. And he's pointing out here that the bricks actually are like melded or one with the limestone or whatever type of rock this is, the, the rock, the bedrock. And it's just a weird type of thing. <laughs> Lions with dude heads. And it's too long for me to show you everything he shows you. I just recommend, once again, just goofy features randomly carved to make us wonder blah 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 and I'll show you one or two more things here I think he, here he's pointing out like a perfectly flat suture in the rock uh, uh, underneath one of these big blocks at Baalbek I think that's where that is and there's like a perfectly 
level crack in the rock, so it's, it's suspicious how that crack got there. Mm. Here again, doubting whether these... Uh, so it's like this is all one continuous piece, all of this, and then there were like seams applied to it or incorporated into it to make it look like blocks, but it's actually not. Right, see like right here, it's continuous. Here. Shouldn't happen. And we could go on and on. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I do wish in some of these cases we had better pictures, more pictures from better angles. But that's all right. So it's my humble best guess that many of these megalithic sites and stoneworks and big stone walls are integrated with the project of, well, like a lot of the little stuff is done by the same hand as the big stuff. Let's put it that way. Like this is all like one solid piece. And I would say it's likely that this was, or at least possible, that it was done by the same people who did the blocks in less impressive sites. Here was a weird, super weird joint. And tough to say here, but almost a continuous joint between these two rocks. And this more stuff on the pyramids here. Like some of these features just don't make sense. Like, what is this block doing here? Or, I mean, this square hole. See here, once again, parts of the bent pyramid look to be eroded, but the sections that look eroded are raised in comparison to the smooth sections. If the entire surface was originally smooth, then it would need to be the other way around. This is an example of incomplete work where the rough sections have not yet been made smooth. That's possible where the rough sections have not yet been made smooth. Yeah, it's possible that it was all eroded rubble and then someone, or rubbly exterior, and then someone came in tried to smooth it out and then gave up. That's definitely possible. And you see a lot of different stuff like side by side, like this. This could be modern plaster or repair or something. This is one of the most damning ones, I think. Dead giveaway. All right, so go check out that blog. This video by Brian Forster. Uh, this site, Aswan in Egypt. Obviously some pretty heavy work here that was done to create this, uh, but just the knobs and also the rock, the, the bedrock here, the layering, it just looks unnaturally straight and parallel to me. It just looks like artificial layer caking. I could be wrong, of course. And uh, with all these, what I would hazard a guess are fake tool marks and then this like I don't know putty stuff in between. Let's take another look. Oh I guess you see here what it looks like underneath this repair putty if that's what that is or construction putty. So that looks a little more natural to me. This whole area just wondering if that's repair work, construction work or Deception work, uh, discombobulation work, like a big chunk of putty there. And these knobs, I would guess, are purposeless, just to make you say, huh? You know what I mean? Just a guess. Maybe not even a good guess, but whatever. Uh, 
Okay, this video is pretty solid gold. It's a four-part series, Ruins of Old Earth, by this guy, Gary Shonung. And it's on the New Earth channel, and there's no sound. It's just a, a tour of probably his Google Earth place marks. And uh, he shows so many examples of strange features across the planet. Basically, pretty similar to what I'm doing. Uh, just a lot of artificial stuff, a lot of, you know, goofy lines. I think there might be some of these lines, like, right across the street from me, where I live. So keep an eye out for that, like, where you live, wherever that is. Lots of networks of strange lines and lots of, like, square potholes in the middle of nowhere. Like this. Which could be, like, test drill sites. It's possible. Just lots and lots of weird stuff. There's vast areas where you just see tons of this stuff. And lines around them and stuff. And there's a lot in there, so it's four parts. So I recommend you watch them all if you feel so compelled. Briefly, this video on the New Earth channel, talking about this particular megalith, wherever this is. And I'm just pointing out this underlying support structure or the smooth underbelly of this rock structure almost like this is like a cheap facade like the rock blocks are like a kind of facade plastered onto or into incorporated into this underlying structure somehow and uh so i'm wondering whether this is like repair work in modern years or maybe even ancient repair work, or whether it's like part of the process of combining weird stuff together. You know, like building it with a missing piece already. Just possible, it's possible, I think. This video, uh, not too much to say here that I haven't said already, just the multiple modalities of disrepair you got like the face shaved off and then like this portion kind of almost discontinuously damaged and then repaired either that or this whole outer casing is like a thin shell on a, a smooth like concrete thing or something like that it's pretty interesting and just the gibberish after gibberish like I think all of this is not like a communication method, but a, uh, a mind scrambling tactic. Like hieroglyphs. <laughs> like, if you're smart enough to be able to build these structures, would you build freaking, would you make hieroglyphs and like weird pictographs and primitive stuff? No, I don't think so. <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm sorry, I've, I've already spoken about this quite a bit. Okay, so this one, Great Pyramid, and you see this block continuously changing from this look to this flat look. Here you see the hieroglyphics on, on the flat side, and then a, a continuous morph between this area of blocks and these blocks. Mid-block, mind you. Mid-block. Mid-rock, it just smooths out into this flat rock. And one could argue, since there's a staircase here, that it's modern work, you know, recent renovation efforts, which for some reason thought they needed to sand this whole area flat to accommodate this staircase or something like that. I kind of doubt that, though, because you see the, the hieroglyphics on the flat part. So unless those were reintroduced to this area, you see them faint there, then this is the original form. And... It's BS. <laughs> you see that on the other side as well, the, the morphing mid-block over here, from flat to rounded, flat to rounded, again with these knobs, which I think amount to not much of anything other than attempts to confuse. And yeah, I think this is like, the once again, the way of, I say once again a lot, um, the way of outing themselves or maybe even from like a voyeuristic perspective like like you 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 make a bet and see how long it takes them to notice 
this is Philip Drujanin's channel. So thank you to Philip for bringing this to our attention. And whatever blog this was on, I don't know, I don't speak Russian, but um, yeah, like they're just <laughs> making, making goofball features and seeing how long it takes people to notice that's possible. I can't say it wouldn't be fun. Probably would be. Let's look at another picture or two, then move on. Another look at a uh, flatter area. This is, uh, I'm not sure if that's the same area as that staircase we were looking at. Um, hmm. But yeah, you see the transition mid-block there. Flat and smooth and lumpy and weird, and then rubble up here, and just a whole bunch of different stuff together. Possibly multiple eras of multiple parties doing different things to the Great Pyramid. You know, like it was some original legit structure for some purpose, and then somebody came and warped it and did all this strange stuff to it to defame it or to scramble it, to hide its original purpose. That's possible. Not sure which site this is, but like right here you have a flat block which morphs into this construction look over here. Like it's flat over here and all messy over here. So why is that? And then also I just noticed these three columns here in this image. So you have what looks like an extension of the wall or a continuation of the style, at least, the building style. Very similar style here to over here, uh, with some kind of minor differences, or starting to get messier on this column. And then over here to the right, we have a fairly consistent rounded shape to the column. And then in the middle, I would say, is something like halfway in between. So you have a squared look here, and then we also have the rounded combs, but not perfectly rounded. It's pretty messy. Some kind of knobs on there, it looks like. Uh, like squarish round pieces that make this column look like an interpolation between this and this. So this would be a good possible example of evidence for some kind of algorithm having been used to generate these structures or generate the editing of these structures. Round, square, halfway in between, aesthetically and construction-wise. And surprise, surprise, I gotta jump in here with a few more examples from the Where is the Groove blog, and also from a couple Brian Forster videos. So this is from the Where is the Groove blog, I think somewhere in Egypt, not quite sure what site this is. And we see this wall, which I thought was like three or four feet high, but then we see in the next image that it's about twice the height of this lady. So probably about 10 feet tall, 11 feet tall. And we see here these blocks, which transition from flat to lumpy. And the author of this blog is focusing on something else, which is probably important, the groove aspect. I'm focusing here on these lumpy features in the middle of the flat block. So it's as if someone sanded all this away. Like this is how it originally was and then someone came and sanded it down to flatness, which doesn't quite make sense to me why they just did some of it. And it's very reminiscent of some of the, the lumpy irregular center protruding portions of the blocks in Byblos and some of the castles I showed earlier. So let's break this down. Here we have like a little line here, continuation of some kind of maneuver or whatever, and it continues onto this block as well. Whether that was smoothing and machining or sanding, or whether this is how it looked originally, I'm not quite sure. And this block, only half of it is sanded, or a portion of it is flattened and the rest is lumpy and irregular. Same thing here and then these blocks aren't touched. So it's very either like work got interrupted or 
who knows really here's a closer look at it just very strange why go to the, all the trouble to do all these make these look all nice and tidy and then just <laughs> leave it like this doesn't make a whole lot of sense this image also from the where's the groove blog and this in particular this lone block which has this step up here which uh, doesn't have any neighbors which do the same thing so mm, i guess there's a small step up here on these but it's a different height than this it's just very strange and you see these are kind of pillowy as well see pillowy pillowy surface um and then these are less pillowy these ones down here it's like flatter but still like a tiny bit rounded and pillowy looking and here we have a somewhat smooth step up here knobs over here but this is not level with these not that it has to be but it's just hard to imagine why someone would just sand away half a block and see all, all the different types of rubble going on all right Petra yeah we're in Petra and we see this staircase which left side stairs are very clean at least in some parts of it and then it's it would appear that the stairs are continuously morphing or taking shape out of the bedrock itself which is fairly weird looking to begin with uh, one possible explanation is that water erosion affected some parts of the stairway more than others that's kind of what it looks like actually that might be what's going on here uh, it's also possible that it looks this way to begin with or very similar to this which would be consistent with how weird the rest of Petra is this is just one more possible example of a continuous sort of morph between the bedrock and the steps and we see that the steps aren't even level so like they went to all this effort to to create these steps but they didn't even bother to make it level see how uh how lumpy it is doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me which is why i think it might be created to not make sense as a type of psychological thing just another look at it here and here we see the surrounding cliffside or rock that it's carved from slightly weird looking in my opinion another image from petra here we see these two blocks appear to be connected and again it's not the highest resolution image so this could be mortar or render or whatever you want to call it connecting these two but it also kind of looks like the blocks are just joined which would be very strange and then this image I want to break down quite a bit. So we have what looks like the natural rock here and interrupted by this wall here. So not quite sure why this wall follows a, uh, a jagged pattern. Maybe the natural rock for whatever reason cuts away at this point or there's no more rock here. So they built into a cavity, it's possible. And then we see here, this portion looks very much like the lumpy aesthetic of the natural rock, even though it's supposed to be blocks. Although, you know, maybe they made a block out of the natural rock, which makes sense. But it's just the inconsistency of taking great pains to make it flat and clean in some places and then not clean at all in others, which could point to multiple eras of construction, multiple stages or phases. Or it could indicate some type of deception or tomfoolery. And then this strip right here, it's like natural rock. So we have the natural cliff or bedrock here. And it, for whatever reason, it seems to only go down in this little strip here. Unless this is like another type of mortar. But it's, it's tough to tell the difference where it starts and stops. Kind of looks like it starts up here very difficult to tell what's going on like something well might be some type of filler putty or something like that yeah your guess is as good as mine or better 
this structure, just want to say briefly in Egypt that it wouldn't surprise me if this is not modern repairs, but if rather it's the original form or at least an archaic form. So that would mean these blocks are more or less for show. These ones looking pretty real and these ones looking like their brothers, but of these ones, but either shallow or or maybe it's a complete block, but I just wonder if this flat portion is modern or if it's was done a long time ago along with these. Same type of thing here. Very weird damage patterns. I think a lot of what's considered modern reconstruction of these sites is probably not that. It's just branded as that. And then we all just go along with it and take it as fact. But this flat area may not be repairs, whether modern or older, it might just be the original form along with the weirdness of the damage patterns. So here's a Brian Forcer video. I wanted to show a couple things. Number one, this gateway thing has this weird lump sticking out of it and doesn't have one on the other side. Once again, a uh, possible misleading feature or deliberately enigmatic feature, along with, of course, these flat portions, which you can't really tell whether they're modern restoration or not. And here we see this thing that's quite well known, the little spaceship looking thing, the tank looking thing, and then what looks like a helicopter over here. You can see it up here. And I just want to comment that it may be one more breadcrumb that whoever made this structure just wants us chasing. They put this here because they want us chasing every single rabbit hole they set for us. Something like that. Doesn't really matter what the hole is, the rabbit hole, as long as we're chasing it. Or chasing one rabbit hole, and then another, and then another. And here we have a king's list on the wall. And he mentions that some of the kings and eras are missing from the list. So this that's like double rabbit hole layers to go down. One rabbit hole would be to, to go investigate all these kings and who they were and what they did, if they even existed. And then another rabbit hole would be to try and figure out why some kings are missing from the list. And Brian uses the words enigmatic and mysterious to describe this whole site. And... Just reiterating here that I think that's the point of the site, to be mysterious. Ooh. The site, this part of it was buried, and no one's really sure what the function is, and that may be by design because it didn't have a function, and the burial of it may be by design as well, because if you wanted people to spend a lot of time chasing breadcrumbs, you would make it enticing but somewhat difficult for them to chase. Like, you would want someone <laughs> spending a whole lifetime excavating a site, so you might bury it and then leave some parts of it poking out so that, <laughs> or just, just below the surface, so that it could be found and would be found eventually. Oh, one thing I wanted to speculate on was the possibility of, sounds crazy, but time jumping and planting these various features at these sites in a staggered fashion. So if you could jump forward in time, which theoretically should be possible if you can go fast enough or whatever, any number of ways, but you just skip ahead a thousand years, make some edits, and you get the advantage of natural weathering, and then skip ahead another 2,000 years, add some more stuff, which is somewhat similar but somewhat different. And if you had that kind of ability, you could make all kinds of weird stuff with different age indications. Of course, I have no evidence that that occurred, but hey, who knows? And this is the main thing I want to show in this video. This block right here to the right. How the... keep your eye on the top of it. The camera's going to pan to the right. And how the top of it meanders as if it's a crack, but it's really just the top of the block. So, it's a weird way to build a block, I would say. Obviously, it's a very common theme to have blocks of different shapes and sizes, but it just looks like this one is almost d 
designed to look like a crack, even though it's an edge, a block edge. And we do see legit cracks in the material, uh, like over here, apparently. So very difficult to make sense of. And it's a pretty tight fit here. Looser fit over here, obviously, possibly erosion. And then pretty tight there. And then it diverges again. This is the second pyramid, and you see some casing stones, granite, lying on the ground here. Some of them are still attached to the pyramid. And we see the, the joining of them is very weird. Like you wouldn't machine these blocks all precisely on one side and then just do it like this on the other. Maybe they were fitting it to an already rubbled surface that's possible. So that's why they had a rubbly backside to the granite blocks. Um, but just note this recess consistent recess along the edge of it just a weird pattern I'm not quite sure what to make of it this weird pattern after weird pattern is pretty much the theme of all these sites another Brian Forrester video here exploring the, the Giza Plateau here's the Great Pyramid and I would highlight this strange feature as possibly being nonsensical here in the middle and he mentions something which I wasn't actually aware of. I guess it's pretty well known, but that all the blocks are different shapes and sizes. So difficult to achieve and put them all together, obviously. And I, I bring this video up because here you get another look at this recessed area. And he comments on it and he says it's dynastic era work. This one, I think it's the, the third pyramid, not the Great Pyramid. And he mentions attempted entry into the middle of the pyramid and I'm not sure whether he's referring to this or this but either one might be decoy features or false history or legit I don't know but I, I would venture a guess that this portion is deliberately misleading in some sense here we get a good look at the knobs and this flat section And the recess, he says, was done during dynastic era. Um, it's up for debate as far as I'm concerned. Who knows? And then we just have a lot of examples of very precisely fitting blocks, very loosely fitting blocks. Some are very eroded, some are not very eroded. And this type of damage pattern with the flat repair or possible repair. I observed that on the interior of the pyramid as well, so I want to take a look at that and make some comments. And just looking at this here, it's it's tough to tell what's the repair and what's the original. Like you have this right here, which is distinct from this right here, which is distinct from this. And then here we have this dividing crack. And then here it seems like this isn't really much different from this over here. So it's like this material kind of fades into this and it only looks distinct over here. Then the line kind of dissolves, picks back up again a little bit. But anyways, um, so let's take a look on the interior of the pyramid and see if we can see it, the same thing. This is the grand gallery inside the Great Pyramid. And you can kind of see that same thing here, although the lighting's not great. We definitely see some damage here, here big chunks out of the stone. Um, yeah, like right here. Kind of see a similar type of repair or uh, lapse in the material that looks like it's been filled. But the interior of the Great Pyramid remains at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, so it has a constant temperature. So there shouldn't be much temperature fluctuation. I'm just trying to brainstorm on what might have caused this damage. Um, so no freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing, no high heat affecting the stone. Also, it's completely insulated from sandstorms and weathering. There's no water erosion. It's not exposed to wind erosion. So 
if the interior of the Great Pyramid looks all damaged like this, I have a hard time explaining how it got damaged, since it's all insulated from the outside world. A uh, couple possible explanations, maybe some tourists or robbers or anybody in the past couple thousand years came and just whacked at it with an axe or something, or I mean a chisel, trying to deface it or destroy it or whatever, just for fun or whatever. And also earthquakes maybe could cause some cracks and stuff like that. But all these little damages and chunks, it just seems like that shouldn't really happen on the inside of the pyramid like it does on the outside. Another look at it here. You can see it better, like right there. Like what happened? A big chunk of this stone just randomly broke off in this pattern, and then someone came and filled it? Or is this the original form? This is the original way it looked, and it was just made to look like it was damaged. And uh, some weird look to it right here as well. See this lumpy pattern in this side of this tunnel or shaft, it's kind of strange. Here we definitely see that flat repair or filled in look like this. I don't quite know what to call it, but I think it's phony. And I really don't know my stones that well, like geology and the material properties and how it breaks and weathers and wears and stuff. But this, in the context of this, uh, it just makes me call BS just because it's completely insulated from the outside world. And it does look cleaner for the most part or less damaged. But then you see these strange patches like this, um, these corners, good look at some of the damage there, it's not quite clear to me how that occurred, and a couple images of the interior of the pyramid as well, I just wanted to get a bunch of different angles and shots of it, so grand gallery again inside the pyramid, and Hard to tell with the lighting here, but kind of see the patchiness on the walls. Let's go to the next image. Here we definitely see the uh, some kind of artificial rupture or break in the pattern or the natural granite block, I guess. I don't know what to say. Uh, like right here, like was this a piece of the, the rock? or the original block that somehow fell off and then the Egyptologist put it back in place? Or is it that there was a slight crumble away or erosion in these white areas and then it's just a shallow layer of putty right here? Is that what's going on? Here along the side of it you see this and then another one here, another thing there. Pretty weird. Yeah, weird. Once again, the point I'm making here is if it's inside the pyramid and insulated, then this damage shouldn't occur much, if at all. So how did that get damaged like that is what I want to know. Big chunks of stone just, what, fell off? This big chunk of stone just cracked? It's possible. Stone does crack. I just wouldn't expect to see this much. And then we'll see other weird stuff too. Here, kind of dark, but you can see the differing coloration there. And big hole there. This is looking up at the ceiling. And <laughs> how did the ceiling get all damaged like that? Nothing fell on it because it's the ceiling. And only thing I can think of is someone throwing stuff at it or natural thermal expansion, although or earthquakes breaking up the material a little bit. Um, yeah, you see all the damage here. 
whatever these L things are. Looks, might be. That is pretty weird, actually. Huh. Okay, this is the Queen's Chamber, and a whole bunch of things I'd like to point out here. Again, this flat repairs look, multiple different layers here. We've got this light brown layer, this layer on top of that, which looks continuous here. And then we've got a darker layer there, and then even darker layer there. Could be like painting or surfacing and resurfacing over the years. That's possible. This random hole right here. And more strange breaks or repair patterns, discolorations or different colorations. So I'm wondering what's the repairs and what's the original? Like how did this block break like this? And is this the block or is this the block? Uh, it's just odd. And here you see, if this is the original block we see here, it's kind of breaking away and giving way to whatever this is, putty or something. This, these pale uh, spots, and then random dark spot there. Um, can't really make heads or tails of it. And then here, what the heck is this thing? Right here in the center. Just a big blob of unprocessed rock. Doesn't seem natural that they would go to such lengths to make these high precision blocks and joins. And then yeah, I'll just leave this here. And my theory is that it's just there for aesthetics or mixed aesthetics, putting primitive stuff with advanced stuff or advanced stylizations of primitive stuff and primitive stylizations of advanced stuff. So just a random blob here of stone. And also here in the floor we have, so if this is a block here, looks like this is a block right there. And then the block next to it has like this pattern in the stone, which ends almost artificially like that but why is that pattern on both this block and the one next to it the most obvious explanation would, would be that they're mined from the same quarry and they, this was just material that was mined right next to each other so maybe this is a natural stripe in the rock i don't know just the way it ends though like it's pretty odd also, this block, does it end here or does it end here? This is some kind of edge, but this also looks like another type of block edge. So how in the world did these two edges end up so close together? And I, I mean, it would make sense to me that this is all one piece and it's made to look like multiple blocks, something like that. And yet another line here. Hmm. So you really can't tell what's what is the point I'm making. Or a point I'm making. This is the King's Chamber. And more of that same type of damage pattern. Could just be a very shallow um, fracture or fissure. I don't think those are the right words, but I think you know what I mean. Like a, a shallow piece of it breaks off. Could be. Um, this thing I find very weird over here. This guy. So there's this block here. And then this block over here. And then why is there a gap here? A very sizable gap. See, we have all these precision fits. And then this very strange... I guess the explanation would be that this is like filler putty and then the, the edge of these blocks was damaged somehow. Like both of them had damaged edges. 
and I don't know if those damaged edges were thought to be damaged before they were put in place during the construction of the pyramid or if the edges were damaged after they were put in place at some point while just sitting here. And we also see a similar thing right here. So I don't know, maybe the corner broke off, I guess. Hmm. And then this thing, of course, how did it get so damaged while just sitting in a, a sealed room, basically, inside the sealed pyramid? <laughs> and not just the top, but the rest of it, the sides. The only thing I can come up with is that it was damaged before it was put in the pyramid. But why would you use a damaged piece? So I think it's just one more mismatching aspect of the pyramids and the whole big picture deliberately mismatching this is a tunnel the robbers tunnel it was dug out in 820 AD and so it's not part of the original construction of the pyramid allegedly this was just done by marauders or robbers or whatever you want to call them and I wonder mm, this just looks weird. I don't know if it's, as they say it is, here we see some portions of blocks, what look like blocks, like under the pyramid or something. Not quite sure where this is, just looks strange. And I guess all I want to say about it is that I question the official story that it was someone's attempt to make their own entrance into the pyramid in 820 AD. I think there's also a chance that it was part of the original construction which had all these varying aesthetics to it and levels of damage or pseudo damage and I think this is that entrance to that tunnel forged by Caliph al Mamun, because <laughs> that matters uh, just uh, strange looking and wondering if this is even the original way the rock looked yeah like how do you how do you get through all this rock, man? And why um hmm. Like precise blocks here with kind of messy stuff here with some floor floor blocks, which are not very tightly fitting. So it's just kind of a, a hodgepodge or a, a mess. And this is the image caption was stairway of the tomb in the center of the pyramid. So I'm not quite sure which passageway this is but just pointing out the damage patterns and cracks on the interior uh, and just wondering how it got damaged if it's insulated from the outside world. And while I was looking at that stuff, I just came across a couple images of interesting stuff. So here's the exterior of the Great Pyramid. This block in particular is what I want to show in this image. And it's, it looks like a tongue almost or a a chair and it's got kind of a divot out of it there just a very weird shape that I would have trouble making sense of if it made sense as far as I'm concerned we can just put that in the pile of deliberate nonsense and maybe like these strangely regular grooves here which kind of subdivide these blocks into kind of a pillowy look a little odd and here multiple things going on it's exterior of the Great Pyramid again right here we have so there's this block and then this like interrupting piece of it I don't know if that's a repair on the block almost looks continuous with whatever's going on with this block I don't know about that but it's a discontinuity in the material, which could be from just the way the natural rock was. Uh, slightly strange. This could be a chunk that broke off and they put it back in, but still looks kind of weird. Where else? Right here. So we have this block, and then this is good to go, this right here, but and then right here and right there, we have like a different type of rock, and then almost this looks like the same type of rock but uh i don't know if this is like repair putty or what but and i know putty might not be the technical term for whatever would be used to repair this but 
you get the idea. Uh, just a strange break pattern if it was a natural damage that happened to the rock. And then the repair just looks a little weird if that's repair. And if it's not repair, then it's a rock with this random second material going through it. This rock right here, or this block, similar kind of thing. It's got this discontinuity, I would say. Just uh, partially, I don't know what we would say about it, flattened. Partially flattened surface here, or somehow distinct from the rest of the block. Looks like there's some streaks going across it. Um, whether that's artificial construction tool marks, you know, just from creating the block. I kind of doubt that. Uh, this line almost looks like it's continuous with this, but maybe not. Uh, just hard to explain how this one corner of this block got to look like that. Here, interesting curved joint here. And in several places we see some damage in the stone, which looks like it's filled in with either natural buildup of dirt or some type of repair putty or even like a stone that's shaped in the correct damage pattern. It's tough to say what this is. Same thing right here. This almost looks like buildup of dirt, but uh, like right here, this block, this edge of it is accommodated by this very strange looking. So is this right here the same block as this right here? Kind of looks like it from the top edge and this edge and the bottom. It looks like it's the same block, but this part protrudes out from the face of the block, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So that would be possible evidence for a nonsensical block or deliberately deceptive block. And then just real quick comment on the Sphinx, how we expect the Sphinx to look, how it actually looks. This was a painting of Jesus that was infamously restored recently, and then the artist just botched it. <laughs> I think it's so funny. So it's like a very derpy creature, the Sphinx. See how cartoonish and awkward these paws are, and of course the silly proportion, the small head relative to the body. And of course there's theories that the head is a more recent addition, but I think it's just one more detail of this rich gibberish project, which mixes a bunch of different aesthetics that don't belong together. Like this is both primitive and high tech looking. Like the kind of precision of the face, but like what they use that precision to create is kind of weird and ugly <laughs> and then these I don't I actually don't know the story of these paws and how much of this is recent but this is very like it looks like a five-year-old drew these paws and then the hole on the top of the head and this thing on the side of the face that almost looks like a lever or something I'm speculating that that's all just layers of potential rabbit holes to chase. We gotta wonder why it doesn't have a nose and why this is here and why the holes on the top of the head and why the head is too small and why some of the body is there but the rest is gone. So it's just a big nothing show or it's a pseudo artifact if that makes sense. Designed to look like it may have been a real artifact or was one, but with all these mysteries about it, of course, which draw you in and basically trap you in a pattern of chasing dead ends because the whole story is like a dead end from the start. One more from Brian Forster. I only do so many from Brian Forster because he has good footage and he visits pretty much all of these sites. It's just a good resource. And this video is looking at artifacts and this one in particular I want to you've probably seen this the schist disc as it's called and it kind of looks like an impeller of some kind 
and he says that's probably not what it was used for because the folds or lobes are shaped in such a way that they would not propel air or fluid. They're all facing the same direction. So it's, I'm wondering if this is like another type of decoy thing. And we see another version of it over here. Similar but different artifact. Five lobes and just a variation on it. Could be just genuine artwork or pottery. Or it could be another thing to make us scratch our heads. And then stuff like this. Wondering whether these artifacts are legit. And these sarcophagus boxes or whatever you want to call them. Some of them are travertine, some are granite, some are quartz, all kinds of materials with different hardnesses. Some of them have drill holes or something that looks like a drill hole. Some of them don't. Some of them have hieroglyphs. Some of them don't. Some of them have knobs on the end. Some of them don't. Some of them have two knobs. So it could just be different stylistic variations, which is completely innocent, or it could be part of a effort to confuse investigation. And I feel compelled to make an analogy between the schist disc and a plumbus. If you've seen the show Rick and Morty, a plumbus is this thing right here. It's an object with an unspecified function or ambiguous function or no function at all. So it's suggestive of having a function, but ultimately it may not have one. They never actually explain what it is and what it does, if it does anything. But obviously this is suggestive of sexual stuff and maybe like a cleaning, like a plunger or something like that. Um, it looks like it could be used for many different things. So that may be the point of something like this. This may be a deliberately inexplicable object. So yes, obviously it could be a part of a machine. Like, um, well, schist is very fragile, so it wouldn't make sense to make this as uh, any type of heavy duty thing, but it could be like, I don't know, maybe schist has some interesting properties and you rotate this or something like that and it creates a vortex or I don't know. We could imagine a, a function as a machine part for this and it looks like that. So what I'm saying is the features of this may be designed such that the disc looks like it could have been used for something or was definitely used for something. So it straddles multiple possible explanations. It's like this thing is almost maximized or optimized for inexplicability because it looks like it could be many different things. Could be a vase, could be a propeller, could be, you know, oh, a rope wrench. This thing right here, which is used to make rope right here. Guy had an interesting theory that this trilobed disc is a rope wrench. You feed the rope through here and then you spin it and it kind of makes rope like this. That almost makes sense, or it, I would say it definitely would, except for it's made out of schist, which is very brittle. It breaks easily. That When this thing was found, apparently it was broken in a bunch of pieces. Although I guess it's possible that the repair could be part of the deception as well, like it was brought into being already half broken and half repaired. But uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I think it probably was found broken and then some type of repair effort made, or I don't know, who knows. But the point is, is it deliberately inexplicable like a plumbus, complete with features that just look like they might be something, but you can't quite tell what that something is. And for that matter, is all of history a plumbus? <laughs> <laughs> is the Great Pyramid a plumbus? It, are the Nazca Lines a plumbus? Eastern Island? Is that a plumbus? Um, what else? Like castles? Well, no. A little bit, maybe. But more and more I'm looking at some of these structures with that kind of eye of maybe the features we're seeing on these structures are akin to plumbus features. <laughs> including all the goofy lines, the tooling of earth stuff, like the, the mature and inexplicable grids and grooves everywhere, 
all across the surface of the earth that might be like plumbus type stuff just to uh, look like it might be something but pretty much isn't anything hopefully that made sense this video Brian Forster these tool marks um, which I'm 50-50 whether they're real tool marks or fake ones and then also these these kind of purposeless rectangles and divots like that like why okay this blog was mentioned in that uh, conspiracy RS video lost technologies of the past and it's very worth checking out let's check out just a couple things talks about some some mystery spy mystery spirals as he calls them and tons of weird patterns like this similar to some of the stuff I'm finding just like that stuff um, oh this is an interesting one uh, this is not something I had noticed but apparently in Africa there's all these weird uh, like WTF patterns he calls them eyes or I don't know boomerangs strange goofy patterns of weirdness so more, more and more people are onto this stuff now this guy's like pretty on on point with his with this material so go check this out I'll put a link in the description <laughs> just like I don't really have any words for it other than WTF <laughs> like it's obviously artificial was it did it serve a purpose you know what I mean and there's so many of them like and there's they're like variations on a theme so that's why I think like a some type of computer algorithm just like took Earth's current form as its input and then put a, a bunch of like gibberish into it uh, using some algorithm and then did some kind of operation to make it look like that new desired state and when I say current form I mean current whenever this operation happened so like they took the earth as it was did some weird BS to it with some goofy algorithms and then <laughs> uh, made a bunch of patterns um, maybe I'll show you one more of his articles just a lot of great stuff in Alaska these triangular divots and patterns in North America this lake which could be modern work obviously but it's like it functions like a Tesla valve apparently I wasn't familiar with what that was but it it's like a diode for water it only allows water to flow in a certain way but not in the opposite direction so it's it's like a, a sophisticated water channeling device apparently so that's one piece of the puzzle wouldn't surprise me if it's modern or somewhat recent you know like 1800s 1900s or something like that underwater spirals again a bunch of weird stuff Like what? With the the heart at the end of a line pattern. So this is this is like a variation on that theme. Still possible that these are like some type of fishing trap or something, because there are heart shaped fishing traps that are in modern use. I, I is is these that? Is these that? I don't know. water spirals of Africa in a lake somewhere got these spirals just chilling and like a little antenna off this piece of land um, obviously it's possible it's a fishing trap or something but uh, lots of weirdness 
Once again, maybe their way of outing themselves. Hoping that we wouldn't find out. Or possibly hoping that we would, and just betting on it, or, I don't know, just enjoying the, the show. The Truman Show, or whatever. So, go check out this, this, uh, WordPress site. It's a lot of good things happening here. And it's ongoing. He's got new stuff coming out, so. Check him out. Alright, this video, just wanted to highlight one thing he said. Uh, right here, so the trident in this Hindu dude's hands or whatever, doing the whatever hands sign. This like Sumerian dude with the trident, uh, Greek architecture, or I mean sculpture with the trident. So once again, variations on a theme. So it's like, it's like an algorithm was asked to create cultures. Again, this, the snake head thing, it's just lots of, lots of little similarities and strange poses that are shared by these different cultures and I question whether some of them are real cultures or maybe some of them are decoy cultures or mimicked cultures that have been plastered onto the the scene in Earth's history to muddy the water possibly of legit civilizations that existed or or to create some confusing network of gods and sculptures and artwork and weird stuff. Starforts.org. Brief shout out here. Definitely go check this out and download his um, place marks. I think place marks are a very important thing because it allows people to quickly verify stuff for themselves. So definitely check this out. If you want to look at Star Forts, I haven't noticed a whole lot of Star Forts, but I'm not looking for them. So, but they're there. I mean, it's an interesting piece of the puzzle. So, go check this out. And I guess there's a forum and stuff. So, cool stuff. Fontainebleau, France. Just briefly want to say that this would be a super cool place to visit because if any of the mud fossil stuff is legit, then this is like super uh, animal looking or anthropomorphic or uh, um, a lot of this stuff looks like actual animals if you check out this video or like it could have been an animal or it's like a skull or something and I wouldn't put it past whoever did the pyramids and stuff to like create a bunch of decoy rocks that look like animals like petrified animals or something but weren't but then it's also possible that, I don't know, that there were legit titans and, man, I don't know, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> Anything's possible, man. Which is frustrating, because it'd be nice if we just knew. That looks like a dick. And this, I don't, I'm pretty sure this stuff is not photoshopped. I went and checked out some different sources and... It's just like warped like skin faces or what look like faces, but it's just a weird, weird place that I never heard of until recently. So like this one especially, that looks like a, a head of something. Like like Falcor from Never Ending Story or uh, I don't know, like a, a lemur or a, a, some like a cat or like a weasel or something, like some kind of skull of something like that. Or even like a dinosaur or something, I don't know. Like a brachiosaurus or something, I don't know. But it looks like, you know, the eye socket here, the fossa there, um, where the muscle attaches. It, it looks like that, I mean, it's tough to say from just one photo. But, I'd say it's suspicious at least. And if you had A to B technology that's taking any A state and transforming it into any B state with arbitrary speed and facility, I mean, basically, that's like the definition of godlike technology. Um, but if you could do that, then you, you might do all kinds of crazy stuff like turning animals to stone and 
turning that stone into a, a pyramid and, <laughs> and then, like you, you might do all sorts of weird experiments or just uh, strange little exercises or like in the same way we doodle on paper this might be like the doodling of gods <laughs> or more technically advanced beings. Another video by Philip Drujinin and Richard Lopez. Uh, this one's pretty cool because it mentions these stone sites or these megalithic sites how in one spot of the site you'll have like these perfectly fitting blocks like you've probably heard people say that you can't fit a credit card or even a piece of paper in between these blocks like they're so tightly fitting and then you, you have that and then just a few meters away you'll have like really sloppy stonework where there's like big one or two inch gaps that aren't very well joined not very precisely joined or cut or formed and you have like damage and like divots on parts of these structures and then you have other parts where there's like no damage and it's completely flat so yeah I think these damage patterns are important to consider again with the knobs some kind of cobblestone street I mean yeah maybe it was like some type of geopolymer that they formed into these patterns but why'd they make it like this you know um, it's possible that these divots are like left over from the construction of it some type of construction method and then it's also possible that or some other function and it's possible that it's just decoy features like these strange this crack here these arrays of divots which kind of amount to nonsense yeah like here's the perfect joint here between the stones and then there's also in the same structure you'll have sloppier joints which could just be from earthquakes and stuff affecting parts of the building but not others but I guess you gotta take each example one by one and also compare them but yeah whatever doorway is leading to nowhere Facebook post um, some of these are actual doors I think but there's a lot of stone doors that just aren't doors so I think that's another dead giveaway that these uh, structures and possibly entire cultures from our past are like decoy or in some sense nonsense cultures or false cardboard cutout cultures that are put there as a filler possibly to establish some type of headspace or precedent for the subsequent humans that are to be managed in a particular way maybe new earth video recent one about these I guess kites they're called and stone circles in Jordan and plenty of weird patterns very similar to what you see in Africa also South America parts of South America um, piles of rocks in goofy patterns once again leading to me to at least suspect that some type of algorithm went apeshit on the Earth's surface for any number of purposes or reasons or causes and she does a really good job in this video um, obviously she's one of the heavy hitters in this area um, just I mean if you were thinking those were natural then just look at this one like they're not natural and she touches on the scale of it like the sheer scale of it and then also the rocks how weathered they look oh yeah I noticed this when I was looking in Jordan too these lots of weird lines here so I think this gigantic vast area of rocks is just like those rocks were just plopped there by somebody and then they left these strange patterns as a signature or a symbol to alert us to the fact that much of the landscape is 
artificial, maybe? I mean, or it's like their calling card, you know? Here you see plastic, so it's obvious modern stuff, but I think, yeah, must be. But yeah, just the scale of it. And if you check it out on Google Earth yourself, you will probably agree that it's quite strange. So it's like, could we be any more obvious in outing ourselves? Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, all this. Whoever did it. And I'll show you real quick what I found in Jordan a couple days ago. Uh, this is very similar to what we've seen in Peru. This, this like patchy terracing or pseudo terracing pattern uh, that w we looked at some alongside some of the Macher stuff in that segment earlier. Um, but I think you'll agree that this is at least somewhat similar to the, the patchy hills in Peru and Bolivia. And it's pretty vast area that you see it. Pretty weird patterns, obviously not natural. Uh, I mean, I guess you could try to make the case that it's natural, but I don't think so. And then I guess you could try to make the case that it's modern, or that it's the aggregate activity of thousands of years of human history, even prehistory. Uh, I don't really have anything to say to that other than maybe, definitely maybe, and I doubt it based purely on instinct and spidey senses so i don't know how much that's worth but i mean just look at it just look at it going across the road here so there's that what else is there there's a whole bunch of stuff um i don't know uh, a lot of this stuff i was saying was tool marks i'm not quite quite so sure about anymore Yeah, pattern, these parallel grooves, I don't know, whatever. Pattern continues, patchy chunked out areas, whatever that is, much like Peru and elsewhere. So it's like, what happened, man? What happened? Machined, I don't know if machines the the right word. I, I kind of regret using that word. Here you see some pretty, well, those could just be bedding layers of the rock or erosion in a somewhat parallel fashion. Um, yeah, pattern continues. over a very large area and yeah cool also over here in the Middle East more artificial stuff what country is this Iraq it's a long channel thing very long and it's like it's just a big inexplicable dirt pile I'll show you a couple images real quick from this New Earth video. Uh, one more example of these columns that are similar to the Brian Forrester video in Lebanon. So these columns as part of the structure, and I'm kind of not buying it. It doesn't seem like they were lacking for stone, so I don't think it's really necessary for them to come in here and use old columns as building blocks like and then the extra work to fit these corner pieces around it like i i doubt that oops sorry yeah and then this feature here like this kind of lace pattern or not lace but some some type of pattern it looks like part of an old wall or i mean part of an old structure almost but like as part of this structure, it doesn't make sense. Like if this block were originally crafted for this structure, then why would they just use one block with these strange 
patterns here, and then the rest of them different. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then compare that with the, the square pattern on the other ones. So there's this raised square pattern on these, and then similar but different here. So it could be another one of the, that type of a calling card type strategy where they combine goofy features in such a way as to tell you not so subtly if you're observant enough that the structure is bogus um, for this reason and for this reason. Um, so like if this block was utilized from an older structure and that's why it has this pattern on it, then why is it so similar to these patterns or these these square raised things although maybe these were from that structure as well but and then of course there's the possibility that these two features ran the length of this entire block since this block was recycled from an earlier structure and that made sense for that structure but for this structure it it looked better, I guess. They thought if the the border was consistent or somewhat consistent, so maybe these ran the length of the entire block originally, and then they came around when the block was reused and kind of sanded away or shaved away some of it so that it matched the other blocks here. But one problem I have with that is, um, see this block right here next to it? there's a fairly widespread phenomenon of differing depths of protrusion for the center portion and also differing margins. Um, so we have a lot to reconcile with this uh, center portion. Um, so here doesn't quite match this uh, margin here or this one next to it. So if they were doing this margin for beautification purposes, aesthetic purposes, why wouldn't they choose a consistent margin? I'm calling this distance the margin. Um, but even here on the same block you have different margins. You have this distance here and then this is about one and a half times that or twice that. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be just due to erosion. Here you see a pretty short one. Here you see a pretty long one. What else? Here you see the margin shaved off or tooled to accommodate this column. And it's an aesthetic thing because they didn't really need to do that. Um, so it is for aesthetic purposes, I think. And then also this little block next to this column. Well, first of all, it's a little weird that this one has this angle, this L shape taken out of it. Um, but this little block here has these tiny short margins around it to accommodate this column block. So they got pretty intricate with it and took it to some lengths to make sure that the aesthetics were, I don't know, I, I don't want to say consistent because they're not, but matching kind of. Here you see the margin again conforming to the this column block, but then the, you see so many different margin widths, and this is something you see on structures all around the world. Pretty much every castle, uh, a lot of Roman ruins, and then let's also talk about the depth of this protruding portion. So here, this is one block. And I don't think it's the same block as this block right here. I think there's a, this block ends here and this block starts here, although I could be wrong. But um, even on one block, you have this shallow, like if this is a half inch depth, then this is like two or three inches sticking out or more so you can't make the case that this face eroded away more than this face because this face is so flat and flush uh, with itself 
looking like this is the original level of the protruding portion of this side of the block. And then this one, uh, yeah, okay, maybe some of it eroded away, but it's still way deeper, uh, the protruding center portion. So that's kind of an inconsistency as far as I'm concerned. Although, let's suppose this block was taken from an earlier structure, then maybe in that structure it served some function to have this side shallower and this side sticking out more, possibly. I don't know what that function would be, but uh, here's another view of it, how far it sticks out. This is the same, same place, and this is that block uh, sticking out like really far and you see some of the other protruding portions and the variation there and this block as well uh, kind of a similar thing protruding quite a bit there not so much there and some of the blocks are almost flat with a slight raised center portion and then some of them are raised a bit more Okay, that's enough about the, the margins and protrusions for now, although I'll talk quite a bit more about that later. And then I also should mention these holes right here, this, this, and then also here and here. I'm not quite sure what these are, but they resemble the base of this column at the same site. So in this video I was watching, the guy said these are probably for... Uh, holding the columns together at the joints so they stick like a an iron rod or bar into these slots and stick it between these columns and you can see it looks the same as this but this isn't joining anything uh, and similar thing here so if these blocks were recycled from an earlier structure then okay maybe these had blocks next to them and they needed to join to those blocks or this was like internal joining for some type of wall it's possible um i don't know something about it rubs me the wrong way though especially because on one column here you have this style of joining and then the segment next to it you have a square wider join and then the one next to that is just one kind of slot join so why wouldn't they just pick one method and go with it and then you also see columns which have a round circular hole in the middle of them. So we have this slot, a circle, the square, these two, this one kind of makes the most sense structurally, I think. It guards against multiple planes of motion. But uh, in this structure, yeah, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe this was, these are recycled blocks that had, uh, structural joins internally in, in a wall or something like that but I just want to throw it out there purely on instinct that it might be like a gratuitous hole type of situation um, and that's not only intuition because we do see so many other gratuitous holes like right here same site this is a column and by the way, the site name is the Citadel of Amman, or the Temple of Hercules, or I think there's one more name. A lot of these places have like three or four names. I can't keep track of it, but anyways, this column has this arbitrary, gratuitous, rectangular hole taken out of it. Another segment of a column has the same thing, just on the side of it, so that's not structural. And then same side. Here's a bricked up archway, which is another common thing, but another rectangular hole here that doesn't seem to serve a purpose. And then this image, this is the same site again, and it's just 
a total shit show basically of all these purposeless holes or what I'm calling purposeless holes and you see them all over the whole structure little tiny ones bigger ones um, and it's pretty hard to make the case that every single one of these was purposeful um, I think you can pretty easily tell that at least some of these were not serving any kind of purpose. Um, see, like this could be damaged, but this is a deliberate rectangle just not doing anything. And then the varying protrusion margins and depths as well, and degrees of erosion. Uh, again, it's tempting to say it's just the stages of construction and rebuilding and because I mean these sites were apparently attacked and conquered and reconfigured many times but even so I don't know yeah just check out all these holes and then compare that to these columns and this hole in that column these and these blocks and just uh, makes me raise an eyebrow. And I think that's everything I wanted to say on this image. Oh, hmm. Another thing, this one's pretty out there, but bear with me for a second. Um, so on some of these blocks, on all kinds of different structures, megaliths, polygonal masonry, uh, castles, whatever, you'll see a feature like this margin, the curve of this margin, again, sorry for not knowing the technical term, but uh, this curve here, and then you'll see a different type of feature, but in a continuing pattern with that first feature. So it's as if this crack or uh, discontinuity or whatever this is in this block is an extension of this feature. Hard to make out, but this isn't a great image, and I searched for hours to find a better view of this structure. This is the only other view I could find, but... Uh, so it's you can't definitively confirm what I'm saying from just this image, but just keep an eye out for that. Like, like an edge of a block will continue pattern-wise onto the, the color change in another block, or, or a crack in that block. So it's like a feature transfer to another type of feature, but along the same path or pattern. I don't know how well I'm explaining that, but like two different types of features along the same path across different blocks. Anyways, that's I'll have to get deeper into that on another day in another video. Um, these hands and like an elbow here, just considering the possibility at least that uh, these were not part of a sculpture that broke apart, but were brought into being as rubble already, or as looking like rubble. I mean, that's just possible. I don't believe that outright. I'm just considering it. I mean, it's definitely possible that these were part of a, a very large sculpture or something, uh, or some might try to argue like an, an actual petrified creature or something like that. I kind of doubt that, but uh, yeah, it just looks goofy and cartoony. I don't know. This one I just wanted to show a still image of because it's like a, a lone gate that looks like it was part of a wall, but then, and it looks like kind of damaged but then you look at the edge of it and it's like super clean blocks so either it was like cleanly disassembled along with the rest of the structure around it the remaining walls and stuff or the the continuation of it or it was built as an incomplete structure like this already so and then you have the multiple methods you have like these super clean blocks here and then up here you have these kind of rough construction methods, uh, unpolished blocks, and then you have this third 
look, which is like little pebbles or much smaller rocks in between these kind of haphazardly shaped rocks, which could be more recent repairs. That's definitely possible by a different party. Um, and then this looks like a recent repair work of, of this. That's possible. Um, I think what I wanted to say was, here's another look at it. And again, from this side, it's very smooth and well put together. And on the back side, it's all hodgepodgey and weird or um, messy or shoddy, not super high quality. So either done by a different party or, I mean, if, if it's already this thick, why would you need to repair it with additional material here? Like it would, it would already be fully functional just like this without needing to add more material on the backside to repair it. You know, he would just deal with it as is. So then was the cleaner construction method and the dirtier one done by the same hand? It's worth considering. Uh, again, could also be multiple parties in multiple different eras. Um, possible indications of age here with the, uh, the cleaner looking and, and less clean looking features like this little arch thing, little, little pillars. So either this is modern repair work or older repair work, or it's also possible that some of it was already damaged looking when it was initially constructed. And I've said that about a million times now, so sorry for repeating myself. And just another look at the inside of more of the structure on that site. And looking at this here, it definitely looks like modern repair work. Just cool stuff. Worth a gander. Okay, this is the intermission. This video has an intermission, and this is it. This is it. This segment is called How many pieces of chocolate are in the bag? Here's the bag of chocolate, and I want you to guess how many how many are in here. Thank you for watching the intermission. <laughs> Have you ever noticed um, in movies 